Hey everyone, welcome to this special episode of the Skeptic Metaphysicians. Today, I want to take a moment to reach out to all of you who may be feeling overwhelmed, uncertain, or even disheartened by the results of the recent American election. Whether it brought you joy, disappointment, or confusion, navigating your emotions during this time is important. So let's pause, breathe, and hold space for ourselves. First and foremost, Remember that it's okay to feel however you're feeling right now. It doesn't matter which side you're on, if your candidate won or lost. Elections often stir powerful emotions and bring to the surface deep-seated beliefs, hopes, and fears. If you're feeling anxious or weighed down, know that you're not alone. The emotional aftermath is valid and shared by a whole lot of people. See, as spiritual beings, many of us identify as light workers, right? Individuals who strive to bring light, healing, and positivity into the world. In times like these, it's more important than ever to embody that light and have grace with one another, regardless of what side we're on. Remember, our shared mission is to uplift and support, not to divide. So we thought for this episode, we would bring together some of our favorite past guests to provide us insight into how they're dealing with their emotions throughout these times. Remember, it doesn't matter what side you're on. We're all here to support each other. So these election results have provided some stress to your life, and you're feeling it difficult to process these emotions. Hopefully, the guidance and the recommendations, suggestions that these spiritual leaders are providing to us on this episode will provide some sort of solace or some way forward. Let's start with a simple grounding exercise. If you're able to, go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep, slow breath in. Hold it for just a moment. And then exhale slowly. Feel your body anchored to where you're sitting. And let that breath be a reminder that in this moment, you are safe. You're here. One thing that helps during emotionally charged times like these is to take a step back and observe our thoughts without judgment. Notice what's coming up for you. Are there worries about the future? Are you feeling anger, sadness, or relief? Go ahead and acknowledge those emotions as visitors. They're here for now, but they don't need to define you. But for now, let's hear what these spiritual leaders have to say. Susan Gold is an author and a transformative consultant. She spoke to us about how trauma plays a role in our spiritual growth. Hey, you skeptic metaphysicians. So grateful to be amongst you, Will and Karen, and thank you for this great show you're producing. And I just want to say that waking up, becoming a true adult, accepting responsibility for your own authentic inner power and your sovereignty is a painful process. And we are in this together. And we are standing up together. And I'm no longer expecting a good papa, grandpa, Santa, creator source, to be caring for me at the tippy top of my governmental system. This is a huge opportunity for me to rise and shine as an individual, a sovereign individual, and to wake up and express what it is I want, like, and choose because you and me, we are powerful creators. There's so much ahead of us that's bright, beautiful, and buoyant, regardless of who you are. So if you need me, I'm at susangold.us, and there is a free course there now, Awakening to Your Inner Power. It's a great time to use it. Take good care. And I'm sending everyone power, strength, 
grace, and love. We are in this together. Melissa Oatman is a healer, a channeler, spiritual teacher, and intuitive, and the host of Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness podcast. She's also the author of Beautifully Broken, The Spiritual Woman's Guide to Thriving After a Divorce or Breakup. Hey guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Today, there are many people who are upset, hurt, angry, still anxious, and feeling so many other things. I fielded messages all morning from my daughter who is crying and curled in a ball and scared to death and doesn't understand what's happening or why this is going on. I'm not getting political on here. What I want to tell you is that I understand how you feel. And for some of you, this is really intensified because if you were a victim of trauma, this feels like being re-traumatized all over again. It's a trigger. I know this because this personally was how I felt today. I survived a toxic marriage and I was choked, trying to be pushed out of moving, a moving car, so many other things. Um, and so what happened yesterday feels like being sentenced to go back and live with your abuser again. And I know that that may sound silly and maybe some of you won't understand it, but I know there's some of you out there who will. When you have been traumatized by something, something like this is an easy trigger. So the emotions you're feeling, are va they're valid, okay? The fear you're feeling is valid. Everything you're feeling is valid. But it's also intensified if you have been through trauma. What I wanted to come on here to say was that I heard, we didn't come this far to come this far. Keep shining your light because the world still needs you. I don't know what's gonna happen in the next few weeks. You know, that's not something that I have the ability to do is to predict that. But what I do know is that we're better when we work together and we're stronger together and we cannot allow fear to take over and to allow us to just lie down and quit. I hope that you continue to shine your light. And if you need your moment to curl in the ball and cry and drink whatever you need to get through this, then do so. Your feelings are valid and I understand them. It's very real, the fear is real. As a mother, it was the hardest thing in the world to hear my daughter and her words and how afraid she was to try to calm her, but I don't know what's gonna happen either. I just trust that everything works out for our highest good. If you need help, please reach out. There are people here all over who have resources to help you. Um, and I wanted to just pull a card from my Divine Whispers deck just to see what the universe wants us to know today um, and take a breath. Take a deep breath, my love. I know this is not easy. So we have, have a little faith. The universe is asking you to have faith, my loves. You may not be able to see anything happening in your situation right now. However, the universe is always working behind the scenes on your behalf to bring you what is for your highest good in divine timing. There are a lot of things going on behind the scenes that you don't even know about. There are many players involved in this situation. Therefore, it takes time for the universe to orchestrate everything. You don't have to have all the answers right now, and you don't have to know when or how it's going to happen. Don't give up on your dreams. Your miracles are just around the corner. I think this is a very fitting card for today. Everything is gonna work out. It's gonna be okay. I know it doesn't feel like it is, but it is. So I need you to take a deep breath. I need you to process what it is you're feeling. And then I need you to get back up again and to keep moving forward, to keep shining your light and being who you are. The universe, we need you right now. We need your light. I said yesterday that one of the messages coming in was that you cannot drive out darkness with more hate. Yesterday, the message was, hate will be driven back into the dark. And I believe it will. It's in divine timing, but it's gonna happen. And we will see that day. 
So keep going. Be strong. I am sending you so much love and light. If you need anything and you need support, please reach out. If you want to work with me, reach out. You can go to my website, melissaopen.com. Just breathe. Just keep breathing, okay? Just keep breathing. Do some self-care. We've got this. Faith String is a third-generation past life healer, Reiki master, cosmic channel, and manifestation coach. Faith combines her ability to access the Akashic Records with her understanding of the chakra system and the physical body for a whole system healing experience. My head and my heart are still reeling. It has been a tearful couple of days for my friends and colleagues of color and for my LGBTQ plus community members. There aren't words to express how deeply you have been let down again. I'm not going to tell you to believe in unity right now or to forgive your neighbor. I'm not going to talk about deliberate creation. I'm not going to pretend that this is any less devastating than it is. I do know that however you are feeling, you are entitled to it. And you get to be in that space as long as you need to be. I don't expect anyone to trust in a greater plan right now or to double down on belief in personal sovereignty. I know that light workers still experience sadness. Healers still need healing and being spiritual doesn't mean ignoring the human experience. I do know we are closer to the destruction of colonist structures than we've ever been before. And what is restoring my faith is the deep knowing that kindness does still exist. What is a balm on my soul is just how many people do believe in dignity equality, and human rights. I know that human beings time after time have demonstrated resilience beyond imagination. I know that there will still be joy, and I know that there will still be laughter, because even in the darkest of times, that is how we cope. I know that after a little more time, I will be able to make a conscious choice towards love. I know I will be open to whatever direction towards service to the collective spirit wants me to take and I will help others find their path as well. We can only take this next leg of the journey day by day. We can only ask our angels and guides to reveal evidence of compassion. We can only remember to ask for help when we need it and give it when we can. Stay connected to the practices that ground you and fortify your connections with like-minded souls who live around the world. We don't know what is to come, but we have the ability to face it with wisdom and courage. There are still infinite solutions available. You are not alone, and I know that this is not the end. Alyssa Rushton a death survivor, internationally known energy intuitive and sound healer who's thought of as one of the world's most cutting-edge thought leaders on conscious life creation, ascension, and embodying your divine self. If you are feeling saddened by the election results, this video is for you. And if you're feeling happy about the election results, this video is also for you because here's the real deal. It does not matter who is the president of this country. What's important to remember is that you are here to actually bring in new earth. New earth doesn't get divided. New earth doesn't thrive when there's a Republican president or a Democratic president. New earth gets created when we do something different. Now, here's the other real deal is this country, America, was founded on a lot of really gnarly things. And you're finally seeing those gnarly things. The problem with this is that no matter who the president is, we're in a loopy pattern. So that loopy pattern isn't going to change unless we do something different. And that different thing isn't the Republican or Democratic president because those things were founded way, 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 way back when we decided to take the land called America and take it from its indigenous people. We cut ourselves off from living at soul level. Okay. So we totally disconnected from that and we made it about 
who can get more land, who can get the most money, and who can have the most. Once we started forming our society based on those principles and also disconnected at soul level, then everything just started becoming a fractal and replicated out what we have now. You can see this fractal of more money, more success, more fame, more land, more greed. You can see that fractal in the entertainment system, the medical system, the healthcare system, our government. You can see these threads and these fractals in every single movement that we have in America, every single big function we have, like entertainment, like the news, like our food system. So if you really take a look at how our country was created, you understand that what is here now will not change. We're in a loopy cycle pattern. And that loopy cycle pattern is what you're here to break. So we simply must disconnect from the notion that a change of the guard is gonna make things better. It is not. Yeah, your taxes might go up or down. Yeah, the price of gas might go up or down. Yeah, you know, we might have to pay a little more or a little less when we pay for our interest rates. But what we have to do is we have to break the cycle of disconnection with soul disconnection with self, disconnection with others. And we have to go into forming new earth communities, new earth councils. And so here's what you can do. Instead of getting all wrapped up in election results, you can instead back up and ask yourself this question. How can I form a new earth community where I live? Can I set up a new earth council where we actually start to look at soul level how we can operate our lives, how we can operate our world, how we can educate our kiddos, how we can nourish our families. Because what's happening today is we are set up in this old loopy pattern and it literally is not going to change at all until it changes inside of you. The new earth happens as and through you. So it starts within and it starts with us becoming sovereign beings and reconnecting into the soul, re-remembering that we are here as souls in physical form and setting up new societal structures and new ways of being that are founded and funded in that peace. And until that happens, the reconnection with soul and self nothing else matters. It literally does not matter who's president. We have to fix it. We have to clean out the gunk and the gunk is plugging into that program of our current governmental structure. So now is the time to really reclaim yourself. Now is the time to set up new structures where you live. Now is the time to start having these soul level conversations and really get your communities together and ask, how can we do this differently? How can we make sure that we're not accidentally, unconsciously playing into that old loopy pattern? The first step is awareness. Awareness of we are still very much plugged into an old, very gnarly, very nasty cycle to keep people in separation, to keep people in the slave matrix, to keep people basically overworking, disconnected from their families, disconnected from their food sources, disconnected from their divine and physical form. And I really believe that that's why you're here now, you're watching this video right now, because you are a part of this reclamation of our souls, this reclamation of ourselves and a reclamation of this earth plane. We live in a paradise planet and we've been very separated from operating with it as such. We've been separated in how we work with all of the abundance and all the vitality here. So it's time to come back to soul, to come back to self, and it all starts with you. Dr. Susan Corso is a metaphysician and intuitive and author of the eight Energy Integrity Workbooks. I'm Dr. Susan Corso, and I'm talking to you from upstate New York. And I want to bring your attention to the chakra work that is necessary at this point in the evolution of our country and in the evolution of our civilization. The first chakra is red, and the sixth chakra is blue. Red is associated with survival, living life, comes with the gift of life itself. The sixth chakra is wisdom, comes with intuition. 
And when you add the two together, the red and the blue, you get the seventh chakra, which is purple. And purple is abundance. So that's the goal. We are looking for abundance, but we are looking for abundance for ourselves and for everybody else without exception. Everybody, even the people we don't like. So how do you do that? How do you actually do that? Well, the first thing everybody has to do is grieve, but not for the reason that most people think. We have to grieve all of the separation and the rage and the anger. And there is a specific way that I believe everyone who is doing their own spiritual work needs to work. And that way is to work through essentially what is baked in to our republic. America was founded on the basis of blame and punishment. Like that, don't like it. That's why the people got on the Mayflower, was they didn't like what they were living in. So what we get to do is we get to heal our own tendency to blame and punish. One of the ways to do that is to use my favorite word and the word that I believe is the most important word in the whole world, in all languages, and that word is and. And, because whether you disagree with the person sitting across from you at Thanksgiving or not, they still live here with us, whether we like their politics or their opinions or their ideas about life or their churches or the color of the shirt they're wearing, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is We're all here, and we're all here together. So we need to clear up our own tendencies to blame and punish before we go healing, blaming, and punishing all over the world. My friend Virginia wrote an email for her company, uh, and she said, "I, I know I feel betrayed. Now we continue living a life of integrity and kindness being in community and nurturing community, even on the hard days, especially on the hard days. So here's what I want to tell you about hard days. And it doesn't happen very often that I get to quote myself, but a dear, dear friend of mine, I checked in with him yesterday, wrote him an email and said, you know, how are you doing with all this? And he wrote me back and he said, I keep thinking about what you said to me eight years ago. I didn't really know what that was. (laughs) So he, he said, Eight years ago, I said, I feel like all the supervillains are coming out. And you said to me, I said to him, you know what happens when that happens, right? That's when the superheroes show up. My birthday was in October, and a a dear client of mine sent me a present. It was a mug, and it said on it, I write, what's your superpower? And so I'm really asking. Because the only way we are going to get through the grief and the blame and the punishment to the place of and where everyone is included in all of the abundance in the whole wide world is if we bring our superpowers to the world without stint, without vengeance, without apology. I write... What's your superpower? Sherry Flake is a licensed clinical social worker with over 25 years of experience helping people as part of her own private psychotherapy practice for the past 17 years. Sherry has provided counseling, coaching, workshops, hypnotherapy, as well as meditation classes and retreats. Hey, beautiful people. What's up? Are you feeling bad about things? I get it. It's a lot. But there's one thing that you have that no one else in the whole universe has. There's one thing that you're going to have forever, longer than this administration, longer than this pimple, longer than this body, longer than anything. And that's your consciousness. And it's all yours. And I want you to take custody of it and decide 
what you're going to let in. Decide to let your brain be like an email spam folder, right? Don't just let anything in there, man. It's your consciousness. It's you. It's your being, your holy and divine self. So what are you going to be? What are you going to think about? What are you going to talk about? What are you going to let in there? What are you going to go right to the junk folder? And what are you going to keep in your inbox? You got this. Take custody of your own consciousness. Much love. Gail Thomas is a channel to extraterrestrial consciousness who gives guidance to people finding their path and awakening to higher consciousness and healing. She's an ordained metaphysical minister and healed herself naturally and alternatively from cancer. Good afternoon, we are our top. We are pleased to be with you, blending your consciousness with this now of your now time. Seeking words of comfort and solace. Struggling, finding it hard to come to terms with recent results. We would like to say this to you. Do not be afraid. Do not be sickened. Do not be disheartened. All is in the all. <clears throat> Your highest path awaits your input and only you can create your highest path. Know that the responsibility for the quality and well-being of your life rests solely and completely in your transmission of energy into this physical world. There is nothing outside of you that can give you a complete result or remedy or solution to the energy that you may not be putting into your life. Understand and focus on your unique transmission of energy into your world. You can create your health and well-being. You are also in a position when you are conducting your energy through into the physical life so wondrously and so authentically to bring the happiness and well-being up of others. As you are a collective being, shall we say, but each as a node of uniqueness and expression, understand that your path to happiness and success lies in your loving action to each other, to yourself and into the world. Despite appearances externally, despite any understandings or misgivings or perceived misfortunes on who is running things or running your country or government. Your energy supersedes all of this. Your energy, excuse our pun, trumps all of this. Trust your energy. Trust your intuition. Your intuition is the reality. Your intuition is your beauty and truth. Using your intuition lovingly into the world is your loving action. You are enough with this judgment. We offer you our unconditional love. Thank you and goodbye. <clears throat> Elizabeth Sabet is the founder and CEO of the Institute of Transformational and Transpersonal Coaching. Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Sabet, and I want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to offer some words of support and encouragement and a little energy practice to help you release any fear or anxiety that you're having about these past election results, to remove them from your body and to remove them from out of the field of information that we're always in the process of imprinting and sharing with the world. Right now, the collective mind needs our calm mind. The collective needs our calm mind, needs our focused mind, needs our passionate, loving mind, needs us to find a way to amplify our goodness into the field so that there's more of that than there is of the divisiveness that has faced us for so many years. There are going to be systems in our world and in our government that need our light. Our neighbors need our light. Our 
immigrant families need our light. So what I'd love for to, to do today is to offer you a little breathing practice so that you can release the collective energy from your system and come into a place of peace, even if just for a moment. Any time that it gets too stressful for you, just come back to this practice. So if you are feeling any anxiety or anger or frustration, that's normal, but we don't want to carry it or amplify it for the collective and in the collective. So I invite you now to take a few deep breaths and ask your body where peace resides in your body. Take a few breaths and say, body, show me where peace lives within me. Once you find it, maybe you want to put your hands on your body where you find it. And breathe deeply, connecting to your peace. And when you feel calmer, now send that peace into the collective until you feel a little shift. And it may take longer than what we have in our five minutes here together to find that. But once you do, you've done something really, really, really important. You're informing the collective field of peace, of potential. I always say solutions are found in calm minds. And we, we have to, together, find solutions for our friends, our community, and our nation as a way to undo any negative that's been being, that is being planned. We have to find a way and we will find a way together in our internal peace and carrying that peace for the collective. So the collective can come together and find a third alternative to what we're facing now. I wish you all peace and I wish you well. Thank you and namaste. Leora Leone is a published author, a TV show host, a Divine Path life coach, an energy healer, a teacher and a coach, and an international motivational speaker. Loving soft souls are in pain now. Those that want to heal the earth and all of her inhabitants. Those who want to lift humanity up and not tear it down. Those who wish to lend a helping hand to those suffering or in pain. For it is not the glory, money, or fame we desire, as we do not observe the gluttony and selfishness found in the low vibration of the physical. Instead, we seek to heal. This does not mean we are weak. We are firm in our convictions, and we will fight for the world and her occupants. Unfortunately, to move the pendulum forward slightly, we must be taken to the furthest end away. We will continue to illuminate with our love and healing powers. For we came here to do that. We are the light workers. We will prevail. We are the warriors. Pamela Downs, the founder of Spirit Calling, an online portal that offers a community for those who are on their spiritual journey and channels messages from the Great Council of Light. Hello. I am so happy to be able to participate in the receivership of energy to the audience of the Skeptic Metaphysician podcast. Um, I channel the Great Council of Light, and they have been asking for all of us to pull ourselves out of the chaos that exists now on our planet. And for us to understand that this is merely the beginning of lots of change that is coming. The guides are asking us to hold ourselves in high regard hold ourselves in high regard. So if you can imagine a sea of chaos, 
in one direction, a sea of chaos in the other direction. That's what the guides have been speaking about for the last several months since June. And all eyes being placed upon it, all attention being placed upon it. There is a manipulation of energy happening. And our guides, our benevolent, loving guides, are watching and here now to support humanity, especially the United States right now. So if you are able to take yourself out of the conversations of the chaotic energy that is spiraling around you, be able to equalize, rebalance, and maintain a constant, more grounded energy. They're asking that you do that now. And that might mean holding yourself in high regard, not participating in certain events, not participating in certain conversations, not participating or hanging out with or being near certain people. They want you to take that energy that you're feeling that's being thrown at you they want you to hold yourself in high regard, protect yourself, guard yourself in the most loving way possible. Now, this isn't fear-based. This is love-based for you, for you. And by doing that, you are rising above this chaotic force that's going in one direction and the other direction, our country being divided manipulation and control, trying to break us down rather than build us up. And as conscious, consciously evolved human beings who are living with an expanded spirit and understanding, we have the opportunity to receive this beautiful divine guidance. So the guides want you to go within. They want you to revel in the understanding that you are safe. You are witnessing this spectacle, this separation, this exchange, and you are able to rise above it, standing strong, grounded in your understanding that you are the creator manifester and builder of your reality. So with those words, they ask you to use the tools that you know how to use. That's your meditation. That's your sound healings. That's all the things that we just referenced and hold yourself in high regard. Tony Ghazi brings through high vibrational heartfelt messages from a wide variety of galactic beings that he connects with, including the Praying Mantis, the Arcturian Council of Light, Tay Gaddens, Grey Aliens, Angels, Ganesh, Mother Gaia, and Angels, among others. To be one with you in this now moment of creation, to merge hearts to hearts it's with all the versions of who you are, with all the probabilities and possibilities of who you are, which is the infinite being. You are infinity. What is your hurry? What is your rush? Regardless of what the decision of your humanity was for the geographic location you call United States, the people of the country have spoken in a sense but beyond the words, beyond the idea of voting itself, know that the consciousness of such a country has pushed itself into this paradigm to allow things to surface to the top, in a sense, for them to be released once and for all. And this is where you as a divine being, this is where you as an infinite creator are able to shift the paradigm within your reality. Simply because the consensus of humanity 
specifically speaking, the population of the United States have spoken to nominate a specific being. Know that you have the individual choice within your bubble of reality to, in a sense, alter, change the frequency and vibration and the relationship that you have within yourself about that being that has been voted into office. Know that each and every one of you is a light being. Know that. We understand that there is a concept for you that is challenging at times to comprehend because of the choices that those beings are making. But you see, it is because of the, it is because of the idea of separation that has been instilled within your mind that does not allow you the opportunity to see the other being as truly being part of who you are, as truly being part of the infinite, as truly being a divine ascended master to begin with. Yes, every being on your planet is an ascended master. Every single consciousness on your planet is ascended mastery, allowing you the opportunity to reframe to restructure the belief systems within you and to remind you that it is within you where the power is contained. That should you give away your power to the idea of voting, should you give the, your power away to the idea of that the United States has created this paradigm, this um, mechanism of voting to allow somebody to be in power, that is only one part of reality. Remember that the power lies within you and that you are able to shift the vision, in a sense, the vibration and frequency of that being through your inner lens. So begin seeing the people in power from a different light. Begin challenging yourself and questioning and saying to your mind, what am I not seeing that those beings are helping me see? Regardless of the choices that they make that you perhaps may not resonate with. Remember, the infinite is the infinite and every choice is valid part of creation, yes? The more that you judge other people's actions, other people's behaviors, other people's choices, the more that you separate yourself from yourself. This is an opportunity for you to begin validating that even though I may not resonate with the ideas of the person in power, I can still honor that being on their journey. And in addition to that, honor your path on that journey. And begin allowing your energy to infuse, we will say from a positive perspective, to allow a version of that being to appear, to match the positivity that you are, in a sense, instilling within their energy. The more that you keep feeding the idea that the being in power is not the person that I would like, that I prefer. The being in power is X, Y, and Z on the spectrum of judgment. The more that you judge that being, the more that you bring out a version of him or her of that vibration and frequency. But when you begin seeing that being as true part of creation, as an ascended master that was placed there to show us a new perspective that we cannot see, that we are unable to see right now because our emotionality is filled with storylines. Allow that opportunity of the unseen to be seen by you. And that begins with your heart. That begins with compassion. That begins with the idea that because I am the infinite being and because there are infinite probabilities and possibilities and there are infinite choices that any ascended being can make, that doesn't mean that I don't have the power to shift my paradigm that I live in. That doesn't mean that I cannot invite the version of that being that in a sense matches the vibration and frequency of how I feel. And this doesn't mean that you have to agree with that being's policies, choices, or decision. But what we would like to invite you is begin seeing that being from a version and aspect of you of compassion and love. 
allow that version of them within them to reveal itself to you. And through that act, you will begin to see a version of them, of the being that is in power that matches your vibration and frequency. The more that you continue to follow the paradigm of judgment and separation, that there is a party you call Democrats. There is a party you call Republicans. There is a party you call liberals, et cetera, et cetera. Those, as you can see, but you are not seeing our separation. You are separating your humanity within each other from each other. Begin seeing that being from a more of an um, aligned and integrated aspect and bring out that version of them that matches your vibration. Should you be in the vibration of hatred, you will bring out a version of them that matches that vibration of hatred. Should you be in a vibration of absolute confusion, you will bring out a version of them that is of absolute confusion. Should you begin being in a vibration of compassion and love, and even though I may not understand the reasoning, I may not see with clarity what the grander mission is, I have my heart open to learn. And I invite myself to bring out a version of them that matches that vibration and frequency. That, how you are able to shift your paradigm into the new reality. And even though the being that was, in a sense, voted in office may stand for a specific party, you are have the power and the ability to bring out a version of them that matches a vibration and frequency of unconditional love and integration. And be mindful that your media has been brainwashed, we will say, designed to keep you in the aspect of fear, to keep you in the aspect of division and separation. Hence why you continue to live in a world of division and separation. Regain that power and give it back to yourself and know that through the visions and emotions and feelings and actions and choices that you make within yourself, the vibration and frequency that you stand, how neutral or in, in a sense, unneutral, not neutral you are, will bring out a version of that being, of that state and vibration. And the more of your humanity is able to do that, be in a neutrality aspect of things. And neutrality doesn't mean you agree or disagree with them. It simply means I am unable to comprehend the grander total mission of what is happening here, but I'm opening my heart to see what could potentially happen. And I have hope and faith that I have the power within myself to bring out a version of that being that matches the compassion and love that I have within me, the unconditional love for the other facet of who I am, which is them. To begin with, you are all one. The more that you continue to separate yourself from the all, the more that you will experience realities of separation. Remember, you are divine beings and everything is emanating through your heart as you are the projector of your own reality. You are the producer of your own movie. With that, we will close the dialogue and we hope to meet you in the very near future of your timing. I hope that those spiritual leaders brought you some sort of solace, some help, some way to move forward through these deep emotional times. Another powerful tool I find is gratitude. And I know it sounds like a cliche and it might feel counterintuitive right now in the face of uncertainty, but taking a moment to find even one thing that you're grateful for can shift your mindset. Maybe it's the warm sunlight streaming through your window or a good friend's support, or even just a cup of tea in your hand. Gratitude, no matter how small, can ground you in the present. And if you're feeling called to action, well, that's okay too. Channel your energy into positive outlets, whether it's volunteering, advocating for causes you believe in, or simply sharing kind words with your community. Know that constructive action creates ripples of change. My ask above everything else is to please be kind to yourself and to others. The world can feel heavy, but you don't have to carry it alone. As light workers and compassionate beings, let's practice grace with one another. Reach out to your circle, talk to those who lift you up and know that it's perfectly fine to rest and recharge. Taking care of your emotional and mental health isn't just helpful, it's essential. 
Thank you for taking these few moments with us. Remember, the journey through uncertain times is one that we are navigating together. You're valued, you're strong, and in this space, you're always welcome. Let's continue to be the light and hold grace for one another. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.